took long enough, I guess, ever since I did the nerd review for Top Gun, now we're finally talking about the movie. And we do a lot of classic 80s movies on rental reviews, so I think this is, uh, this is perfect. This is like prime material right here. Yeah, I definitely always wanted to do Top Gun and... Yeah, what's up? What are you wearing? What am I wearing? Oh, well, uh, years ago, some guy said he would draw a picture of my sister and he instead drew some weird Betty Boop uh, character and said it was my sister. Mm -hmm. And then I made fun of it on Twitter. And then you, Justin, got an artist to draw me in the same position. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to put it on a shirt. It was just a joke between us. Oh, no, I put it on a shirt. I'm, 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 Wait, you but, but you're wearing the same... You're wearing a pink shirt and that hat in the picture, and you're wearing heels. Uh, yeah, I, I am. I don't think I you am. needed to wear the heels. <laughs> But that's fine. But first, a message from our sponsor. Before we head down the highway to the danger zone, I want to talk to you about Raycon's new Everyday E25 earbuds. Raycon has some of the best wireless earbuds on the market. They are high tech with seamless Bluetooth pairing, six hours of playtime that charge up to four times in their compact carrying case. They look stylish, fitting in your ear snugly and also matching your style snugly. And clearly they sound clear, which really matters to a music lover like me. Speaking of music, the company was co-created by R&B singer Ray J and worn by people like, uh, Brandy. Sometimes I just sit around and just listen to the Moesha theme song on loop. Lastly, they're pretty affordable, starting about half the price of those other premium wireless earbuds on the market. And now they're even more affordable. When you click our link in the description below, you'll get 15% off your Raycon order. Head on over to buyraycon.com slash cinemassacre. That's buyraycon.com slash cinemassacre. Anyway, Top Gun. Yeah, yeah, so wanted to review Top Gun because this weekend, uh, I believe Top Gun Maverick is coming out, right? Yeah, I can't wait to go to the theaters and see Top Gun Maverick. Yes. <laughs> James, you gonna see Top Gun Maverick this weekend? All right, so we were, we were gonna do this in time for Top Gun Maverick. And then of course it's postponed. Well, here's the thing. I mean, cause right now, obviously you can't go to any theaters because of the pandemic, but they always have a choice of whether to postpone the movie, which now seems like postponing indefinitely. So um, I think the better choice usually is just release it straight to digital, just VOD, just, you know, go right for it. But um, this movie has, they postponed it till Christmas. Now, if that's if that's even still happening, just the fact that movies always have to come out on Christmas, even if they're not a, a Christmas movie, it's it's like, I mean, look, I am not going to see a Top Gun movie on Christmas. I, I that's my busiest, craziest time, and I know apparently that's more convenient for everybody else. I guess because they must be releasing them on Christmas for a reason, because most people probably go to see movies then. But I have never seen a movie on Christmas in my life. So yeah. that means I won't be seeing it for much longer. <laughs> anyway. So the movie was originally supposed to come out in 2019, I think in like uh, July in mm -hmm. uh, 2019. And I guess a little bit before that, they pushed it to this year. Okay. So it's going to come out summer 2020. Mm -hmm. And then because of um, coronavirus and all that crap, they decided to push it to the end of the year. So, so far it's moved twice that we know of. Yeah. But originally it was supposed to come out... Um, like last summer. Yeah. And it was supposed to be made even long before that. They've been trying to make this movie for a while. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and which is weird because aviation, a lot of stuff's changed since then. And yeah. New fighter jets and stuff. And mm -hmm. so I don't know really what's going on with it. Um, I'm definitely surprised, like James was saying, it's not digital only and they just didn't put it out. Uh, oh, I think weekend. Tom Cruise is like, I, I bet you Tom oh, Cruise is like, you better not release Tom, one of my movies direct to video. Tom Cruise, and I respect Tom Cruise, and I think the director of Maverick, they came out and had this whole thing, like, if you watch Maverick when it comes out on home video, on a TV that uses that motion blurring uh, right. crap, we will kill you. So, <laughs> Tom Cruise, and I respect Tom Cruise, I mean, sometimes he's a fucking crazy person. Oh, like with most celebrities, some, some of them are weirdos, but he's, he is a good actor. But he's great at the stunts and everything with Mission Impossible. I love Mission Impossible. Really good. So uh, I definitely agree. I would love to see this in theaters, and I guess I'll wait until Christmas. Mm -hmm. I know you don't go out to see movies during Christmas, James. Hectic time. I get that. But, uh, 
you know. I'll see it during Christmas. I'm Christmas kidding. Day is a big tradition for my people, Chinese oh, yeah. movies. <laughs> I mean, so. I'm saying I don't have the option to see it during Christmas. That's just not there. It's too things are too busy. So like, how the fuck am I supposed to get out to see a movie on Christmas unless like you can tr transport it into my like. TV at night, which is what this is like. Just just do direct to video, and then you know everybody can watch it. But I do understand. Yes, it would take away the impact of not seeing it on a big screen with the surround sound, everything. But I don't think we have that option right now. We probably won't for a while. So um, sometime we'll see this movie. It might, and and Maverick might be a Christmas movie, kind of like Die Hard. You don't know. You yeah. haven't seen it. Maybe maybe they're fighting for America on Christmas, James. Yeah, may, may, maybe they shoot down Santa. Yeah, know? maybe Santa is, uh, he needs a new sled and only Maverick can test it out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this movie, it holds up. I think this really does hold up a lot better than, you know, I thought. It was produced by Jerry Bruckheimer, uh, Beverly Hills Cop, The Rock, Con Air, Armageddon, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he works a lot with um, Tony Scott, who directed this, and also Michael Bay. Yeah. Like, that's most of the Jerry Bruckheimer yeah. experience. He also produced Pirates of the Caribbean, right? Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So he's got a ton of money. Yeah. <laughs> and he does stuff with uh, Ron Howard. Don't they have... Sometimes, I think yeah. they, yeah. Yeah, it was directed by Tony Scott, True Romance, Crimson Tide. Yeah. Uh, rest in peace. Rest in peace, Tony Scott. Yeah. Uh, that was sad. I like Tony Scott. Yeah, he no. took his own life, sadly. He's also Ridley Scott's younger brother. Yeah, yeah, brother um, Ridley Scott. Definitely the more um, less artsy, more action, yes. more blockbuster. I mean, Ridley Scott eventually became kind of a jerk-off, but yeah. it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, um, so, I mean, I think the best thing about this movie is the flying scenes. They, they are great, I mean, because they did these realistic plane stunts, because um, they pretty much, they worked with the military on this movie, and to the point where, I mean, this was like serious budget. Like there's a, a shot that I read where they had to turn an aircraft carrier around because like it wasn't facing the sun the right way. And they were like, okay, we need to, can we turn the aircraft carrier around? And the, you know, they were like, well, that's gonna cost $25,000 just to turn it around. And then Tony Scott had to write a check out, like right on the spot, so that they could do that and get the shot he needed. There was a, a pilot, um, Art Scholl, who died during filming because uh, he lost control of the plane during a spin and crashed. Um, yeah. So they actually have like a, you know, it, it says at the end, like it's dedicated uh, to Art Scholl. So yeah, I mean, they, they definitely did serious shit in this movie. Um, it's the real deal. I mean, it's the real deal. What can you say? <clears throat> I know the plane stuff is really good, but I think what really carries this movie is I really like the plot of this movie and the characters as great as the plane stuff is. Cause there's a lot of movies that are built over around like how cool a certain vehicle is. Yeah. But if you don't have good characters and like a good story, like the, the, the action stuff can only carry you so far. Like the movie stealth that has a lot of plane stuff and that movie sucks. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I, I haven't watched this movie since I was a kid. I remember really liking it. And watching it yesterday, I fell in love with it all over again. It, I, it took your breath away? It took my breath away, as that song that plays 10,000 times uh, says in the movie. Uh, no, but I, I really loved all the characters. I wanted them to succeed. I was invested in the romance. I was sad when one of them dies. It was really good. It was as good as the plain stuff is. I think the characters and plot really make it that much better. Sure. They elevate it more than just an action movie. <laughs> yeah. I think the only character I, as a kid, I didn't like Tom Cruise's character um, because I thought he was a cocky piece of shit, um, <laughs> which, you know, which he, he is, but that's what makes it great. Um, yeah. So I definitely like Maverick a lot more now uh, because that's what he is. That's the whole point of the character. He's this really unruly, uh, you know, pilot with these unorthodox flight maneuvers and, you know, gets him into trouble. And then they send them the Top Gun, which is this like elite uh, flight school. And they're all competing to be the best thing. Top Gun, like flight school in, in Miramar. Is that a real I don't know place? if it's called Top Gun, but maybe. I didn't look that far into it. Well, they made hats, so I assume <laughs> I assume it's a fucking place. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I don't know. I will say I miss uh, 80s action heroes sometimes. Just because they're like so odd. Like Tom Cruise is full of confidence. He's having fun. He's breaking rules. He's sleeping with his teacher so he can cheat and get further in his career. And he's a total liability. I really miss these kinds of heroes in our films. Now everyone's got some kind of moral dilemma and they're 
they're sad or they're overly quippy because they're insecure. And I, this movie really took me back to my childhood. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Um, I, I really loved uh, James Tolkien as the uh, the tough commander. Um, there's the line he said as a kid. This was just like hysterical, where he says, uh, "You know, you'll be flying a cargo plane full of rubber dog shit out of Hong Kong." Like, that always <laughs> stuck with me. Um, he was also the principal in Back to the Future. Yeah, and uh, I will say, James, me and Mike, we actually uh, did a video on the PlayStation Top Gun game. Uh, Fire at Will. Fire at Will, and it has FMV sequences, and he's the only actor from the movie to show up in that game. <laughs> yeah. He, like, briefs you on your mission between, like, every level. I, I actually love that game. I mean, I had problems back in the day, like you did as well, with the Top Gun NES, and then when I had that PlayStation game, because I was really big into, like, the Soviet strike and all the yeah. strike, and then all the, all the, all the uh, flight sim games at the time as well on PC and otherwise. Mm -hmm. like, I had, like, a joystick and everything. Yeah. And um, I thought... Um, Top Gun Fire at Will was pretty good. Not as good as like Ace Combat or yeah. you know, or the super realistic simulator ones, but mm -hmm. I also never wanted to get, you know, you know, I know people that have like a full room full of the shit and the throttle and oh, yeah. you know, they have a 737 cockpit that they're in. Yeah, and people whole... really like their flight simulators. Yeah. That reminds me, I have the Ace Combat VR, I gotta play that. Um I like Val Kilmer in this. I, my memory of this movie, I thought he was a way bigger part. Like, I thought he was, like, the second main character, I, and he is not. I like, remember him being a huge asshole in the movie, but he's, like, right 90% no, of the he's time. He's the better, like, he is what they want Tom Cruise to be. They're like, hey, you're a great pilot, but you're also an asshole. Here's this guy who's, like, he follows the rules, and he's good, and he's effective. Yeah. Uh, and Val Kilmer's really good in this. This is before he had that marriage that made him a little weird. And uh, if we ever talk about Island of Dr. Moreau, we'll bring that up again because yeah. he turned into a psycho for a bit. Uh, and I'm bummed he's not coming back for the new one. Yeah, they didn't bring back a lot of people from the new one. Yeah, the, the Kelly McGillis isn't coming back. She wasn't even asked to come back. She's the teacher in the movie. Yeah, she's the teacher. And they asked her, like, why? And she's like, oh, probably because I look like my age. And Hollywood doesn't like that. Whereas Tom Cruise looks like 20 years younger than he is. Well, I did the math. Um, yeah. In the first movie, Tom Cruise is 24 years old. Yeah. I don't know when they filmed it. Maybe he was 22, 23, 25. He was yeah. in that range. And in this new film, based on the time difference, even though, you know, they push it back seven, eight years, yeah. he's like 56 to 58, yeah. depending on when it came out. That's five years older than the than the uh, Viper, the old drill instructor. Michael at Ironside or Tom no, Skerritt? Tom Skerritt. Tom Skerritt, yeah. So he's five years older than Tom Skerritt was in this movie <laughs> and looks half Tom Skerritt's age. <laughs> Uh, and I, uh, I really like, uh, Goose. Uh, Goose is Maverick's co-pilot and, uh, Meg Ryan's husband. I wasn't, I forgot Meg Ryan was in this. Uh, I'm not used to seeing that actor with hair because he was on ER for like 10,000 years and he was like the bald doctor. I didn't watch ER except for the, uh, episode they were trying to, um, it was like kind of clickbait back then where they were delivering an alien baby. Remember that? <laughs> I don't remember that one, but I gotta watch that one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, he was really good in this and actually... Uh, to bring up Kieran's favorite movie, Captain Marvel, starring Brie Larson, the cat in the Captain Marvel comics was originally called Chewie, but for the movie, they changed it to Goose, and they based it off of Top Gun, because oh, she's a fighter pilot in this. Right, because she's yeah. the best fighter pilot. Yeah, and if Kieran was here, he would probably tell us more Captain Marvel starring Brie Larson facts, but he's not, so let's continue more with Top Gun. You could Gun. say he's the maverick of liking Captain he Marvel. He is the maverick, maverick of liking Captain Marvel. Saw it 500 times. Did, did you see the, uh, the Ghost Goose sketch? No, um, I didn't see the ghost no. goose. What is the ghost goose? <laughs> okay, so the, the actor, uh, I think it's Anthony Edwards. Is that the yeah. guy who play, played Goose? He uh, yeah. the, he did this sketch one time where he said that he wants Ghost Goose to come back in Top Gun 2. <laughs> 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 so basically he comes back as a ghost. <laughs> That'd be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, big spoiler. You know, I already said it, but, like, you yeah. know, Goose dying in this movie was, like, a huge deal. Yeah, no, it was a bummer. Like, when I was watching, I'm like, man, I really like that character. Yeah. But we'll, uh, but we'll talk about Goose's murder later. Oh, Goose's murder. I didn't even know about that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we you talked about the plot earlier. I want to say this movie uh, reminded me, it reminded me of several, like, military focus films, but the one that I could think of off the top of my head was Full Metal Jacket. Where, like, a lot of the movie is the whole training, and then they got to use those skills in combat later. But, but uh, this is a very more uplifting film than Full Metal Jacket. Well, Full Metal Jacket has the problem where I want a movie of just that first part. The second part, when they're in Nam, is the worst part of what? the movie. I like all parts. What is wrong I, with everyone? Full Metal Jacket is a great movie from top to bottom, beginning to end, all right? I know the Arlie Ermey stuff is great, but... 
It's a good movie. But no, this reminded me, it was one of those like, hey, here's our training section. Now we got to kind of like Starship Troopers where there's like that huge training section and then they use it in combat. It's, it's hard to go from the first part with Arlie Ermey carrying the whole thing to, to, to the, the, the war part, but it's still really good. I think that the, the key is you, you got to go into it sometime and just start it in the middle. Like ju just watch that part. Cause the, the second part's great too. It's just yeah. kind of like that first part really takes a lot of the wind away from it. Cause then it's like, your mind is so blown by the time you get to that, you know, because it really is two movies. Full Metal Jacket's like yeah. two movies put t together. It's kind of like Goodfellas where you have them doing all the crimey stuff and then it goes into the druggy part. Yeah. And that part's a lot weaker. That's why I like Casino because I think it's more of a connected film than mm. Goodfellas. No offense to... I mean, I love Goodfellas. I like Scorsese yeah. shit. Um, when it's not five hours long. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we, we talked... You, you just brought up Starship Troopers and stuff. Uh, Michael Ironside is also... Yeah. A is. Co the coach in this with Tom Skerritt, who we brought up earlier. Yeah. Um, they're the trainers at the Top Gun Academy, the Naval Weapons Fighter School or whatever the hell it is, where they send the best of the best yes. to compete for no reason. A trophy. To get a trophy. And an astrophysicist is there to tell them about their planes or something. Yeah. <laughs> um... Yeah, but Goose, uh, we brought up Goose. Uh, Goose yeah. is definitely more enjoyable as an adult. When I was a kid, I was like, oh, he's just like the guy. Like, I liked Maverick more, I guess. Because yeah. he was like, you know, the one you're rooting for, I guess. Yeah. But Goose, um, he's just fucking hilarious. He's great. Yeah. Um, it's just terrible when he dies. Yeah. When Iceman kills him. I'm sorry, Iceman killed Goose? <laughs> so what happens is they're all being cocky pilot asshole guys mm. and they are both chasing the uh, i think they're flying in, like the the the, the they're, they're pre pretending to be mig uh russian planes right and they're flying they're like f5 phantom or f4 phantoms or f5s or whatever the hell they're flying yeah. um i don't know too much about the planes uh from the vietnam era and they're flying those the training planes and both f14 tomcats are chasing them yeah but when iceman can't get a lock on them and goes away that leaves a lot of engine wash in front, which makes oh right, which makes him spin out. And they never bring it up in the movie, like oh well, it was Iceman's fault. But it's just kind of like an act of oops, yeah, our bad. You guys shouldn't have been tailing each other. You know, it's like the two second rule when you're driving. You can't be yeah. riding someone's ass that hard. Mm. Uh, and that got Goose killed. I don't know why the canopy didn't go up and up, and his head smashed into it. Yeah, um, broke his neck like a goose. Yes. Uh, I don't know why that happened, but the plane spun out because of the... Because of Iceman? Because of Iceman. Yeah. Yeah. Is that why he's not in the new one? Was there eventually a court-martial for Iceman? They investigated it? <laughs> I think it's because Val Kilmer's not doing so hot now. Yeah, that's probably... <laughs> um, but I was hoping Tim Robbins would come back because that is... You see Tim Robbins in the beginning of the movie? I, I, I saw he was in the credits and I totally yeah, missed so him. Yeah, so much like in Top Gun, the game where you're trying to land the plane and you keep fucking it up every time yeah um in the beginning they have to like you know they get scared by some migs um mm -hmm. russian iran whoever the hell has them in this in that yeah time. it was some so it was a soviet yeah they're all they gave those out things like you know yeah, it's, they did. it's like the ak-47 everybody got one yeah um and they see migs and they get really scared so maverick has to you know instead of landing take off again and help the other pilot land cougar right and it was cougar and merlin Oh, when he okay. goes back to the Indian Ocean at the end of the movie onto the aircraft carrier, mm. he his co-pilot because his other one's dead. Yeah, he gets Merlin. So it's at the end of the movie, it's okay. him and Tim Robbins. Okay, I was gonna say I didn't, I couldn't find Tim Robbins in the movie. Well, well yeah. that was well because everyone's like this. The yeah, whole. they're all wearing the masks and the camera is shaking in yeah. the cockpit. So there's that. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, well, speaking yeah. of the shakiness, uh, the. The shaky camera angles became a lot more common as time went on it seemed like yeah. this this is off the top of my head this is really one of the uh it's one of the earliest examples of like the shaky cam in like an action movie and it definitely became a a thing in the uh the the jerry bruckheimer movies but um this movie has a lot of really great uh camera work to it um they use every conceivable angle of the planes like they're on the wing and then next thing they're underneath looking at the wheels and then there's these spinning povs and then there's like sunsets and even the dialogue scenes they shoot through like a mirror like i think there's a scene in like a bathroom where it's like shooting it through the mirror basically and i don't know it just seems like it's they were always thinking of um how to make it look more interesting and also the sound design 
the sound design in this movie is excellent. Um, I mentioned um, like the flying scenes and the stunts are like one of the best things. It's also the sound design because you have the plane engines, you have them taking off, you have them flying, and every shot when it cuts, the the sound of the engine changes to like a different um, dynamic. Everett's airborne. Nice man, what's your position? Zero nine zero at 180 miles. Yeah, we're coming to the left. Three makes dead ahead, coming down the left side. You know, you'll be outside of the plane and the next thing you're you're inside the cockpit and you just hear like the intense breathing of the pilot uh, with that like really intense synth bass. I remember there's a part when uh, in the beginning when Cougar is freaking out and it's just this dun 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 and he's breathing heavy and it's just like it really gets you, you know, feeling the sweats like, you know, how the character must be feeling. Um, I guess I only had like two real issues with the movie. Okay. One is uh, the government and everyone is really concerned about how much their planes cost and they're afraid of their planes getting like damaged because they cost millions of dollars. Yeah. But in my, uh, as far as I can tell, the government loves spending money on the military, so I didn't see why that would be an issue to them. Hey, listen, they don't want to lose another yeah. tomcat. And then the, yeah, the only other issue I had was the sex scene is the tongiest sex scene. Like... Tom Cruise and uh, Kelly McGillis, they look like they didn't know how to use their tongues. And they're like sticking their tongues out of their mouth into the other. I'm like, what is this? Sex? Like, that they, did they never make out before? Were those, it was all silhouette. I'm like, are these body doubles that have never kissed anyone in their life? I thought that they took, I thought it was a beautiful love story, but that took me right out of it. I'm like, what is going on with their tongues? What are they doing? You're going to say that wearing that? I'm going to say that wearing this. Um, well, Hotshot spoofed that that scene. I think um did? Yeah, cuz um Hotshots was one of those rare movies where you know they used to do it more often back then where they would spoof an entire movie or like main yeah. mainly one movie. Where nowadays whenever they do like a spoof movie, it's like a combination of like a whole bunch of movies. But yeah. Top Gun got its own spoof movie, Hotshots, and this was one of those instances where they would they would make fun of specific scenes in the movie. So th they definitely got that one in there. My, my one memory of the first Hot Shots is when they're like, yeah, uh, they said you had your father's eyes. And he actually has his father's eyes in a case, and like he, his actual eyeball. And then he throws him in the ocean like, <laughs> the like, ocean. like the dog talk tags at yeah. the end of <laughs> Top Gun. Yeah, I, I love Hot Shots and I love Hot Shots Part Du, which, yeah. is, which is supposed to be more like Rambo. Yeah, it's more like Rambo 3. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they went from more, uh, you know, air, air to army. Uh, a lot of amazing characters in those films. It yeah. always confused me because uh, I think the start of Naked Gun 3 He's also fighting Saddam Hussein because I always kind of confuse that era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it was all like making fun of Gulf War kind of stuff yeah. and whatever. But uh, they also spoofed that scene, unless I'm thinking about uh, Hot Shots, in Don't Be a Menace to South Central where they're having sex next to the fridge and they start eating things in the <laughs> fridge like watermelons or whatever. And, and he takes hot sauce and puts it all over her toes and she's like <laughs> fungus and bunions and all that. But that that's a fun scene. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but James, uh, you brought up the soundtrack earlier because yes. this movie does look and sound good, much like Tony in that shirt. Yes. Um, do you remember all the songs in this movie? Oh, wow. Th this is what you call a soundtrack movie. I mean, it's got... Yes, definitely. Yeah. I mean, first of all, there's the theme song, which is like, it's not just a song, it's an anthem. I mean, I think it's even called the Top Gun Anthem. And um, then there's Danger Zone by Kenny Loggins. Which they play ten thousand times, and I love it every single yeah, time. But when when that yeah, sometimes it's the instrumental, but when that thing first hits, it hits yeah. like a brick on that aircraft carrier. Yeah, and you see all the guys on the aircraft carrier having a good time, like woo! And like that song and that scene made so many people join the fucking air force. <laughs> Recruiting officers are probably like, "Come on in." Yeah, and then like they play it like four minutes later. It kind of reminds me of the Mortal Kombat movie where they play the Mortal Kombat theme like ten times. <laughs> As they should. As they should. As they should. I read that they actually had like recruiting for the Navy, like in the theater. So when people came out of it, they would, you know. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, I, I said fucking Air Force. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Navy. Yeah, yeah, that confused me too, because it's planes, but but it's a it's Navy, yeah. yeah. And then there's Playing with the Boys, which was also by Kenny Loggins. That's the volleyball song. I mean, if I'm gonna play volleyball, I gotta put that song on. Yep. Yeah, the the Kenny Loggins, he mostly does a lot of yacht rock type stuff, mm -hmm. but I guess they, he sold out and started doing movie soundtracks. Um, and yeah, Playing with the Boys is a little iffy. Uh, yeah. 
What do you think, Tony? I love it. That's my favorite scene in the movie, the playing with the boys' volleyball it's scene. It's like the, the, the most grease, macho okay. scene, yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh my god, that oh seems great. That's it just looks like they're having so much fun. Yeah, when I was, uh, when it reminds me of like I was in high school on the wrestling team, me and the boys would all hang out after practice and stuff, and it, it really took me back. Great scene. There's great balls of fire, um, and then there's, uh, you've lost that love and feeling. And that, then that, that scene where, where they're singing to her like the karaoke style to like you know he's trying to like you know get sitting next to her and get in her pants and stuff like that so he yeah. sings that song and then they continue it afterwards which is funny yeah. but it reminds me of that scene in the deer hunter um the vietnam movie mm. with like de niro and all those guys uh, yeah. uh christopher walken where they sing the frankie valley song in the bar and they're all oh yeah, yeah 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 and then at last, there's boom, 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 <laughs> take my breath away. And yeah, uh, uh, yeah, when they play the music and not the lyrics, like it always sounds like the Twin Peaks theme to me in the very beginning with the okay. boom, boom, boom. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but yeah, they play that song 6,000 times too. And I love it every single oh, time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I was watching this movie and then afterwards I put on that music video because yeah. I remember it distinctly. And it has these two creepy dudes that look like they're from like the bad guys in Short Circuit or something. Okay. And they're chasing this girl whose hair is like colored in like different whatever through like a boneyard um air airfield okay. and all the planes are crashed and then all these ghost pilots come and rescue her from them and then they all disappear well that sounds great that should be the sequel to top Gun. yeah it was weird <laughs> uh i saved I, I said at last but i need to correct myself i do have one more song left from this movie and i saved it for last because i wanted to talk about this one the most it's mighty wings mighty wings we may or may not, at this point, have something out for you, some kind of video related to Mighty Wings. But anyway, it, it, it was used as Ken's theme in Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2. Um, if, you, if you compare it side by side, listen to Mighty Wings by Cheap Trick, the main riff where it starts, and then listen to Ken's theme. It's, it's identical. And uh, my theory is that it was originally meant to be Guile's theme because he's got the army get up and the, the plane in the background. Maybe they changed it because it was too obvious, but it definitely seemed like they were going for Top Gun. Yeah. It, it might have been another thing like M. Bison, Vega thing. They just kind of changed it last minute and thought no one really cared. But yeah, mm. Mighty Wings. People say Danger Zone and the Top Gun theme are the themes of this movie. It's fucking Mighty Wings. It's <laughs> so good. It's like, you know, if Danger Zone is the, is the main one, it's like Mighty Wings is very close to it. Because Mighty Wings, you also hear it more than once in the film. It's There's an instrumental version in the sometime in the middle when they're flying. And then it's the credits. Like you hear it. I mean... It closes out the movie. I mean, and uh, I want to say so at the end of the movie, uh, Tom Cruise like quits for a bit, and the Iceman wins the trophy. But then they all have to go save a ship that's wandered into enemy territory, right? They there was like a carrier that wandered in. No, they say there's some sort of supply ship or some stupid ass ship is out there. Okay, and the MIGs are coming for it, and they, yeah. they have a missile that's gonna. Every everyone has a missile that's gonna sink the ship. Yes, and they have to blow up. They they have to get the MIGs to go away. Yeah, before and then, um be, be, before they sink that ship. But their whole thing is just to scare them away. But then the MIGs fire on them. The MIGs fire for it, and then we fire on them. And like the whole time, I'm like, I'm pretty sure if the Soviets and Americans fired on each other at this time, it would start World War Three. No, it was late 80s. I don't know. I that was think it could have, I think it would have caused a war, but they, they have to do that, they do that line of dialogue where they're like, yeah, the Soviets won't admit that anything happened because they're embarrassed. I'm I like, know. all right, I, I guess that's no, how you're... They never say Russians or Soviets or anything. I assume it's Soviet. Well, because, the, yeah, but a lot of countries had... I guess, I guess. But the point is, I like they're like, the other side won't admit to uh, firing on us, so we're good for now. And well, like, they're, they're 1986, they're a little busy with fucking Chernobyl. I guess. <laughs> so. uh, there's, a, there's a couple scenes in the movie where they film it, at, uh, you know, with the, the piano. Whenever there's that scene, that's uh, Kansas City Barbecue in San Diego. And I always stop in there when I go to Comic-Con. The only other thing I can think to say, other trivia, is that... Um, my dad was really into this movie. That's why I remember this really well. Um, I think he, because he always talk about how real the planes were. He's like, this is the real thing. Like they, they really did this. Um, he was in the Marines. So I don't know, maybe that had something to do with why he always liked these type of movies. Um, yeah. Cause he could also land the plane in the NES uh, Top Gun. And um, 
I remember my, my dad, he'd always landed and I'm like, how'd you do it? And, and um, I'm like trying to do it and I keep crashing all the time. I did want to say, when I was watching the beginning of this movie where Cougar is having trouble landing, it just reminded me of the AVGN movie. Where like you have trouble landing the jet and then you just bail out of it. And like in my mind, I was expecting him to just bail out. <laughs> I'm gonna land the plane. I'm gonna land it. I'm... Fuck it. Um, but I, I was saying I, I was pretty big on planes and military stuff growing up, um, mainly because I lived next to uh, in Tucson, Arizona, and also in New Jersey. There's two huge air bases there. Right. Um, but I always really like. I mean, there's F-14s in this movie, the Tomcat. But I always like the F-15, mm. the Blackbird, the SR-71, and especially the A-10 Warthog because I'd see those all the time as a kid. Yeah. Um, and as a side note, uh, I played Second Life once in my life to okay. see what it was about. And I was able to t uh, get a skin where I turned myself into a pink A-10. Okay. And if you could put that on the screen and play the uh, title th title theme to the A-10 uh, Cuba video game, which is one of my favorites, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that right now. All right, James, so what's our next episode? All right, well, our next episode is the 100th episode, right? Ooh. Yeah, so uh, since it's the 100th episode of Rental Reviews, I mean, where did the show start? I mean, really, it was all about remembering the video store and looking at all the tapes. And what's the first thing you see is the cover, the artwork on the front. So we're just going to talk about some of the craziest VHS artwork or DVD that we've ever seen.